sometimes it can feel really invalidating when you're trying to like push away every single negative thought and every single negative emotion. And you can feel like you are suppressing or resisting, which goes into like toxic positivity, which has like the opposite effect. What's up, what's going on? My name is Sabrina and welcome to, or welcome back to the channel here in the Better You community. We talk about all things self-growth and spirituality. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to avoid toxic positivity while utilizing self-concept. If you like what you hear today, don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up to help with the channel. Feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified every time I post a new video. Let me know in the comments what you liked about this and let's get into it. So if you know me and you know my story, I am huge on emotional intelligence. I think it's not only great, obviously, in like our day-to-day -day life with your mental health and your relationships, but also in terms of being a really powerful creator or manifester. Being able to have such a strong inner core where you don't let yourself get really reactive or emotional by things. And you're really great at observing and regulating your emotions on a day-to-day -day basis. And self-concept is great, it's amazing. I just made a video on how it shifts your reality so fast. But sometimes it can feel really invalidating when you're trying to like push away every single negative thought and every single negative emotion that doesn't line up with like your ideal reality, right? And you can feel like you are suppressing or resisting, which goes into like toxic positivity, which has like the opposite effect. So that's why I wanted to talk about this today so that you can have the balance of like validating the way that you feel and allowing yourself to like feel and release these emotions without suppressing it, without resisting it, while also utilizing the power of self-concept because self-concept really is very powerful which self-concept is basically changing like your self-talk throughout the day, like changing the way that you view yourself and view your life. And a lot of people, like I've seen people teach and teach their own, right? Different teachings, you know, resonate with different people and they work better for different people. But I do see a lot of people teach when it comes to self-concept, you know, every single negative thought that comes into your brain, every single negative emotion that you feel, like immediately push it away. And to some extent, I agree, but also to some extent, I disagree. And there's so many fine lines with this. I feel like with any spiritual concept, like there are many fine lines and you always have to like take things with your discretion to see like when and where to utilize it. Because when you understand like how we create a reality is th through our state of consciousness, like yes, those thoughts and emotions that are out of alignment with what you want to create, like those aren't going to create the ideal reality for you. But also... If you try to say that you like feel really triggered by something and you're like, nope, I can't feel this. It's not like, it's not a part of what I want to create. It's not a part of what I feel. Like if I feel this and it's going to be, it's going to negatively affect me, you push it down, right? And when you understand the science behind emotions, emotions are energy in motion. And so this energy is in your body, right? These hormones have been released into your body and you're not letting your body process them. And so you're saying, nope, not feeling that. You're letting, you're keeping that emotion, that energy stuck inside of your body. And so what are you going to manifest? You're going to manifest that emotion that you're pushing down, that you're suppressing, that you're resisting, what you resist persists. If you're having really like intrusive thoughts, right? really like negative thoughts that keep coming in your brain that keep like being really mean to yourself and you keep like, nope, not gonna feel that and you have this like resistant type energy towards it, it's going to keep persisting because it's like, um, mm, why am I getting, I know I use this metaphor in another video, I'm getting like this visual of like the Chinese finger trap, like you're like resisting and you're pulling like the Chinese finger trap and it's it's going to stay on but it's not until like you allow and you let yourself like flow that you're able to get out of it and it's like it's when we like really force and like forcefully push these thoughts and emotions away is when they persist and they actually do the opposite effect and they stay in our energetic field and therefore we're creating that in our reality because it's staying in our state of consciousness does that make sense and so in order to avoid this toxic positivity of invalidating yourself and really just not letting yourself process what's going on so that it can leave your energetic field, you want to be a little more flowy with what you allow. Like, yes, yes, push away 
these thoughts that come up, but also notice the energy, the intention that you're doing it with. Notice how like forceful you're being with it. Um, instead of being like, nope, can't experience that at all. Try giving yourself a little more like validation with that and observing the thought, observing the emotion, observing, you know, whatever just came up for you and thinking, okay, this came up, accepting it, accepting it. Take a deep breath, allow that energy, allow to feel that energy to like flow through and out of you and then redirect. And this really is like, especially with emotions that are stronger, you need to let your body process certain emotions before you redirect more often than not there again there's many fine lines and you need to use you know your own discretion you need to be able to know yourself enough for this of like what you should let your body process and also what you can just immediately redirect but honestly I feel like when you're getting used to this whole process like when you notice these thoughts and emotions that come up that are in alignment with what you want to create and you pause before you redirect just give yourself a moment. Give yourself a moment to process what just came up. Give yourself a moment to take a break, to breathe. Literally stop what you're doing. I'm not even kidding. Like I, if I feel like triggered by something or if I get an intrusive thought that's like not what I want, that I know is just like my ego acting up or something, I will literally stop what I'm doing and like let myself breathe so that it doesn't continue to gain momentum. You don't want it to gain momentum. You don't want to sit in it and like, ruminate in it and to kind of sit in like this victim mentality of like oh like woe is me I'm feeling this type of way that's what you want to avoid like notice it allow yourself to feel it you know it's very human and it's okay if like something comes up and you take time to journal it out to talk it out to express it to just put it out there in the universe that you're feeling this type of way, sometimes it can be really beneficial to do that because you're getting it out of you, right? Sometimes it can be that like quote unquote toxic when you're not letting yourself express because then you're suppressing. And no, it's not going to create more negativity for yourself when you do this because you're literally getting it out of you. Like you're getting it out of your system. It's going to create more negativity for you if you let yourself sit in it. Now, again, everybody's different. Every scenario is different. Sometimes I get like, I mean, personally, sometimes I'll get these thoughts or emotions and I immediately want to switch it. And sometimes I'm like, okay, this is kind of heavy. I need time to process it. But again, use your own discretion. Be the own leader of your life. And this goes for as well, like doing like shadow work, you know, going back into your past and kind of like healing past hurts so that they are no longer in your state of consciousness, you know, your memories are in your state of consciousness and what you create is based off of your state of consciousness. And so sometimes we hold on to these memories and we have these really low and painful emotional attachments to these memories that's lowering our state of consciousness. Sometimes it's helpful to go back and to let ourselves feel it and release it in order to like, you know, release it from our energetic field. Other times, it's more beneficial to go on the positive side of it, the other scale of it, and to affirm otherwise. Say you, there was something in your past that happened that made you feel like, I don't know, a random example, made you feel like you were ugly, okay? And then you have this belief like, oh, I'm ugly. Sometimes it can be beneficial to go back to the past and to process and to release this emotion. And then other times you can go on the other side of it and just affirm like you're so beautiful and eventually this this memory this emotional attachment that's to this memory will eventually dissipate because of this positive emotion has dissolved it does that make sense higher vibrational emotions are really powerful and really healing love is a very healing emotion and energy and so when you send love to to lower vibrational emotions it literally dissolves those I don't want to say it dissolves. On a scientific level, it more so transmutes those energies to that higher vibrational energy. Now, the times of which you either need to go back and do healing work or affirm otherwise is you need to check in with yourself and see 
what kind of momentum is behind it. If you're, if something happened in your past and you're able to create more positive momentum to transmute that energy, then you don't need to go back into every little thing that happened in your past and spend your days trying to heal different things from your past just to shift your state of consciousness and manifest more positive things into your life. You can just affirm more positively and it will transmute that. Now, if there is something really heavy and really dark and it's a lot more difficult to produce those higher emotional states and send that to that in order for it to transmute it, then those are the times for you to go back, take time, process, spend time there for it to benefit you. So I don't want you to think when utilizing self-concept and when listening to other teachers talk about this work to think that you literally can't let yourself think any kind of negative thought or any kind of negative emotion because that can really lead you down a unhealthy path. There is such a balance in this and I want you to be really patient with yourself and get to know yourself on that level of like, okay, do I need to process this thing that just came up or am I able to just redirect and reaffirm immediately? Either way, the end goal is redirection and reaffirming and putting your focus on what you do want. The end goal is always that. Really use your own discretion with this and you'll get better at knowing yourself the more you are mindful and pay attention to this and like observe yourself and like see like how different things feel within yourself. So I really hope this video helped to give you more clarity on that and to know that you don't have to like have that toxic positivity that you're able to feel and process your emotions that come up, but also still be a really powerful creator at the same time. So let me know in the comments if this was helpful for you. Feel free to share this video with a friend. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified every time I post a new one. I really hope this video helped you out in some way. I wanted to thank you so much for watching it till the end and I will see you in the next one. Bye.